section 5.6 on confidence intervals. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work through an example that's right out of the textbook on page 267 and it should cover all the questions that you have in this section. Um, you don't have to do anything too crazy. It's not like you have to come up with all these different things and do p-testing and stuff like that. So it's not, um, it's not advanced statistics but it definitely gets you ready for thinking about these things. So a telephone survey of 600 randomly selected people, that's the number of people that are included in the survey, 600 people, that's a pretty big sample size. Um, and the survey determined that 76% of people from the ages of 18 to 34, this is just extra information really, uh, have a social networking account. Now, you have to remember that anytime that there's a survey done, anytime you see statistics, you have to be kind of wary because there's always lurking variables, things that you don't think about that might creep in that change the statistics. In this case, it's a telephone survey. That's good, but is it really that good? You're missing people that maybe don't have a phone. Maybe your telephone numbers are only taken out of the, the phone book, so you're not getting people that have only cell phones, right? Because typically cell phones are not listed in the, in the phone book. So you have to think about these things. Is the survey done very, very well? Um, there's statistics thrown at you online all the time, and you have to look at those statistics and think for yourself, well, are those accurate? Any company can say, oh yeah, 90% of teens from you know this country use our product, and you can think, well, how did, how did they even know that? What was the sample size? If they're saying 90%, what's the, you know, the margin of error, which is very, very important. So we're going to look at the margin of error first. The results are accurate within plus or minus 4%. This is your margin of error, plus or minus 4%. That's it. 19 times out of 20 will tell you how accurate the test is. So we have 19 out of 20. If you divide those values, you find out that the test is 95% accurate. Um, now, again, these values are always are given by st people that actually do statistics, and they'll they'll come up with this um, value based on their survey, right? So they can they can actually find these values. Um, so the test is accurate 95% of the time. So that means 5% of the time it's wrong. Um, think about that too. So it says calculate the range of people the range of people that have a social networking account and determine the certainty of the results. So your, your, te your questions out of the textbook will be much more uh, concrete, they'll be very specific. So there's our margin of error. Now what's the confidence interval? Well, we know that the test says that 76% of people, oops, let me get a little smaller, 76% of people have a social networking account. Well what's the confidence interval? We have 76 plus 4% and 76 minus 4% because remember that our margin of error could be plus or minus 4%. So at 76, we need to have a range. You can't just say 76%. If they, if, a, if a company says that, they just spit out a number. It's inaccurate. They really should show their margin of error. And if they don't, you've got to be wary. So 76 plus 4 is going to be 80%. And 76 minus 4 is 72%. Look, I get a range of data. That corresponds to 72 to 80, and I use square brackets because those values are included. So there's my confidence interval, 72 to 80 percent of the time, anywhere within there. Not 76, it's actually 72 to 80. So you have to be careful of that. The confidence level now is just what we said. We said how, how often is this test accurate? And we found that by uh, figuring out 19 times out of 20. We just divided the two and we said, oh, it's accurate actually 95 percent of the time which means that 5% of the time, it's wrong. Um, you're always going to have that kind of accuracy. And that's pretty high accuracy. It's not bad at all. Um, okay, so what if the total population was 92,500 people? So that's the total population, and we said that out of that total population, oh right, 76% of people have a social networking site. So here, think of a, a city, this is almost the same size as my city in, in Kamloops, um, 92,500 people, pretty close. So we would say that 76.76 as a decimal have social networking. So we have your 92,500 times by 0.76. So we would say that 70,000, based on this survey, 70,300 people have social networking. But remember that there's a bit of error, right? There's actually a 4% error. Well, let's see how many people that corresponds to. Here's my 92,500 people times by 0 0.04. So I have 92,500 
times 0 0.04 is 3,700 people. Now, that's how many people we could be off by, plus or minus, right? Plus or minus. So if we're looking at a range of people, then we have to say it could be 70,000, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. 70,300, which are how many people we're saying have social networking, plus 3,700 and 70,300 minus 3,700. So plus 3,700 is going to be 74,000 and minus is going to be 66,600, okay? So anywhere within that range. So we could say again, we could write it in um, set notation here. We could have from 66,600 all the way up to 74,000. And again, we use square brackets to include those values. <laughs> so there's the whole question kind of done for you. If you have 92,500 population based on this survey of 600 people, keep that in mind too, it's only 600 people, but that's a pretty good, usually if you take a survey of 600 people, you're gonna get a really good, a really good results. So that's a large sample size. Um, but you could also look at that, like what, what is the sample size in comparison to my total population, right? You have 600 people divided by 92,500. You have 92,000, or oops, 600 divided by 92,500. So we're taking 0 .0065, 0 0.0065, even if I move my decimal place two places, that's 0.65% of my total population. So if you look at it that way, it doesn't seem like a lot of people at all. So that's why you got to, I mean, even surveys that say, we surveyed 2,000 people. Well, how many people total are there in that whole uh, sample, or should there be in the entire population? So there's an overview of how to find the margin of error, which is usually just given to you. The confidence intervals, which you take your margin of error and add and subtract from your confidence level or how many people total percentage. And then to find the confidence level, we find out like how many times or what out of what is it, how, how many times is it accurate. And then if you have a population, you can actually figure out the population by taking your total population and multiplying it by your uh, however per percent of people that actually have that item or want that or use that and you can figure out how many people total use that item and then you can also use your margin of error to figure out your population um, interval. So hopefully that helps. If you get stuck, uh, just watch the video again. Thanks.